Greetings. The purpose of this video tutorial is to demonstrate uh, how spreadsheeting works, uh, particularly on Excel. So what I have here is the M190 Excel files uh, worksheet on the Z-Scores tab. And I'm just going to walk through this. You see inside of these cells uh, the entry that's actually inside of that cell. This is the function value in the cell. And each of these has different function values, although over here it's just raw data. Now I'm going to clear all this stuff out so that we have nothing there because that's what we want to create. So to start off just raw, we've got some data on a group of people's pulse rates. In fact, 25 of them in particular. Uh, if I look at the up here, Notice that cell there, it says 25 by one. That's how I know there's 25 there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna obtain the z-scores. We don't know what those are yet, but here's the formula for it. You take the value minus the mean over the standard deviation. Uh, the mean and the standard deviation are given here by function. And so what I want is I wanna start off by just getting x minus the mean. So my first x is that number 89. I'm not going to put 89 though, I'm going to put B2 because B2 is column B and row 2. So I've got B2. Now I need to subtract off the mean. I could type in 77.72 because that's the mean of the pulse rates, but this is where spreadsheeting comes in. You can call cells. So I'm going to call B27. That's going to give me X minus the mean. And what that tells me is this pulse rate is 11.28 points over the mean. Now here's some of the magic of spreadsheet. I'm going to drag this down a few levels and notice that it did calculations. This calculation is B3 minus B28. Oh no, B28, that's the standard deviation. So I wanted it to stay with the mean. And then 87, that gives me B4 minus B29. There's nothing in B29. So that wasn't exactly what I wanted. What I wanted was to fix this entry here. So the way to do that is you put a dollar sign in front if you want to fix the columns, dollar sign in front of the number if you want to fix the rows. This stayed the same, but watch what happens when I drag down. Uh, all these values now. Notice that's B3 minus B27. I'm just moving my uh, arrow here. Ah, it's all minus B27. That did what I wanted. Every one of these is uh, the correct subtraction. That's the first part of spreadsheeting, which is using the calculator and then the mass row or column computations. Okay, so now I'm going to get quickly over here to the z-scores. Uh, to get the z-score, I need x minus mu over sigma. Well, sigma is standard deviation, so we're okay with that. So now the z-score then is going to be uh, d2. That's the x minus mu part. I need to divide by the sigma which is B28, and I'm going to do dollar sign B, dollar sign 28. Notice that I put an equals in front. If you don't put an equals in front, uh, maybe I just did X minus uh, or B2 minus 5. It just goes in as text. So that equal sign is the magic piece that gives you a, a, f a formula. All right, so let's just run this down here. And lo and behold, I've got them all. So those are all Z scores now. And I'd like you to notice that down here, there's a function that says the average of these is zero. And it should be using this mean. And the standard deviation should be one using that standard deviation. You'll see that later in the class. So that's just a little bit about spreadsheeting and how I can uh, make use of that. Uh, one other demonstration, if you want to put these pulse rates onto a new scale, let's suppose you want the mean to be 50 and the standard deviation to be 10. 
I've picked 50 and 10. Notice there's no function there. It's just a raw 50, it's a raw 10. I'm gonna do that. The way to do that would be to take the mean I want, the new mean, uh, plus the z-score times the standard deviation. So the z-score we wanted is going to be, let's put this in the new mean, h27 plus, okay, I just freaked something out here. I do a little bit of backspace and I think, think I'm okay. h27 plus, I need the z-score, that's g2 times, the standard deviation is dollar sign H, dollar sign 28. I want that number to stay fixed. Oh, I also want the H27 to stay fixed too, don't I? Yes, I do. Dollar sign, dollar sign. Okay, now when I drag this through, there we go. That converted these pulse rates into T scores. Uh, let's suppose you don't like 50 as an average, maybe you want 500. Okay, uh, it's, it's just gonna auto update all those guys now based on my arbitrary scale. Maybe I want a 3.14, I want the number pi to be the standard deviation. Okay, notice that reduced the spread, let's change it to 100, and then that increased the spread on those guys. So that's basic spreadsheet functionality. Next, I'd like to demonstrate uh, functions on uh, spreadsheets. That's, that's the next level of spreadsheet functionality. So I'm just gonna drop a little line there for our eyeball's sake. And if, if I've got the numbers one through five, I wanna find their mean. Uh, Excel doesn't have a mean function, it's called average. And so I put an equal sign and I start typing the function and a list pops up. So I'm gonna grab average right there, I double click it. And then it gives me a little note about the syntax. Uh, what number do you want? Now, I'm just gonna grab these numbers here. Could type them in, that would be fine. Close the parentheses, notice the function, and then I hit enter. The average of one, two, three, four, five is three. That looks correct. I could note that here if I wanted. And let's get a standard deviation. Uh, well, let's, let's do measures of center first. Let's do a median. And uh, we'll do a standard, let's do a min, a max, and a standard deviation. Okay, so uh, I don't even remember all these. Median, there it is. So we got median. And I'm just gonna grab those numbers. Looks good. Uh, min equals M-I-N. So we got the minimum function, and I can do that there. So this is pretty clear on how to do this, I think. Uh, always the same, you just put the equal sign and then your function name, you can find them. Uh, here, we're gonna do equals STD. There's a bunch of options on standard deviation. We're gonna use the standard deviation for sample. That'll be the most common one in the class. We'll give you a different value than the standard deviation for the population. I'm gonna leave those numbers there. Now, to uh, emphasize the functionality a little bit more, I'm gonna go through the calculation for the standard deviation of the population, uh, excuse me, for the sample, which is this formula. So let's go ahead and uh, get x minus x bar, and then I will do x minus x bar squared. Oop, I'm gonna put parentheses around this guy here. This is just for our eyeball's sake. Then I want that x minus x bar squared and I need to it put a little three on that. Uh, it's trying to be smart, okay? Excel's sometimes uh, gets it wrong there, so keep that. And then we're gonna go over n minus one, and we also want uh, the square root, so let's just go ahead and put the square root on here. Okay, so that's what I'm going for, and let's, let's do it here, so equals, x b3 minus x bar, that's gonna be dollar sign c, dollar sign eight. Uh, nope, not eight, uh, not, not c, excuse me. That needs to be a b. There we go. 
That's got it. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So passes the eyeball test. Looking good. And I just want to put a line here for our eyes. Awesome. So I've got my x minus x bar. This one, I want that squared. We could do it all in one, but this is for demonstration. We need d3, and then we're going to square it. Uh, circular reference warning. Okay, so I'm going to close that out, and it should have been c3, right? So we're going to go down here. We've got all those guys squared. Okay, once I've got these guys squared, when I add them together using my sum, I'm then going to divide and square root. So here we go. Uh, equals, the command is sum, open parenthesis. I'm going to grab these guys right here. And 10 is the sum of those guys squared. So my standard deviation then, I'll just put it down here, equals... I need d8, that's the sum. I need to divide it by 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have five values here. And then I need to take the square root. And we'll notice it's the exact same number as we got when we used the standard deviation sample function. So that demonstrates how to use functions and continue that spreadsheet functionality. Summarizing up the spreadsheet concept then, it's a giant calculator that has these row and column mass calculations with functions inserted in. Combining all those, it's a powerful tool.